So, um, something has been bothering me about the big screen beyond for a little while now. Um, I'm a VR enthusiast and an engineer, and uh, when I hear quotes from some of the online YouTubers saying things like um, Thrill Seeker saying the numbers can't quantify the experience, uh, Tyrell Wood saying that it's the most true to life virtual reality experience I've ever had so far. Um, Kaz and Cherry VR saying it mirrored trying VR again for the first time. That sense of magic all over again. What do you do with that? How do you unpack that? I mean, we look at facts and figures and try to make decisions when we're buying things. And, uh, you know, it's hard to take the emotional content that they're saying and, and do something with it. So um, that doesn't work for me. And I'm going to try to put some numbers to this experience to try to explain why people are having an experience that doesn't seem to be a one-to-one -one relationship with, you know, the resolution and other specs. So um, let's start with a practical exercise. Um, this was my first VR headset, the Oculus Rift CV1. Uh, it's a pretty light headset. I'm getting around 539. I'm measuring all these with the cables hanging off of them, so they're going to have a little more weight than the original specs say. Um, it's got a little Velcro static strap across the side. It's got little spring-loaded um, straps with Velcro adjustments on the side. Um, and uh, when I put it on, it, it grabs my, my face pretty well. Um, if I move up and down, I don't get much of any motion. When I go from side to side, I get a little rattling. Basically, my nose bounces around back and forth inside the cavity there. Um, now, it does hold pretty well, um, and it has a very large sweet spot, so moving around inside of it like that isn't likely to make everything get blurry on me. Um, and the resolution isn't so high, so moving around a little may not impact the overall experience too much. Um, so here's my Valve Index. This is my second VR headset that I spent a while with. Um, it's giving me 781 grams right now, okay? So it's got another static strap across the side. It's got uh, somewhat spring-loaded on there, but it also has an adjustment strap, so I can put this over my head, and uh, I can crank this down harder than I would ever want to have it, or it would start, it's digging into my brow now, but I'm just, I'm cranking it right down, okay? So now I'm going back and forth, and, uh, and I'm getting a little vertical motion, not a huge amount, but a little, and, uh, and it's bouncing back and forth when I'm moving my nose. Now, the index has a bit of a smaller sweet spot, so when it moves around like that, sometimes it'll move you out of the sweet spot and things will get blurry, and it'll bounce back, and, you know, it's one of those things. And the resolution's higher, um, but not substantially so, but still a chunk. Um, let's throw the arrow on real quick. So the arrow is, uh, once again, well, it, it's a little under 800. I've, uh, I've had it on here before where, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting about 750 here. So this is a little more complicated and holds your face, uh, well, supports itself very comfortably. So I can put this on and, uh, and I can, ratchet it down against my face. It uh, has the uh, support on top of my head pushing down so that it fits me real well and I can crank the back down really tight. And when I go back and forth, once again it's beating my nose up and up and down moves a little bit too. So, um, so what do you what do you do with all of that? I mean there's obviously some motion in, in the headsets when you're wearing them, when you're moving around in game, or if you're uh, on a rig, let's say you're in rally, hitting bumps and things are bouncing around. It's going to impact your vision to some extent. Um, but let's look at some numbers on this. I mentioned physics in this video. So um, I took some measurements of the uh, how far um, these headsets are from, from my face to the front. And that, that's just to give me a number. Uh, obviously, for a perfectly scientific measurement, you need center 
of uh, center mass for each of these to make these calculations. But I, I threw some numbers together based on what I had. So basically it's about three inches from my forehead to the front on the rift and the index and it's three and a half inches from uh, my forehead to the front of the arrow. Um, when you, um, let me see here, am I missing anything? Okay, so if you look at this strictly from a, um, from a torque standpoint or, or le lever arm, so you're dealing with just a, uh, a mass times a length, um, you're dealing with um, this coming off the front is like three inches off my nose or off my forehead. So it comes out to um, 1,500 um, gram inches, which uh, it doesn't matter what the unit is, they're gonna be relative to each other. On the index, I get uh, I go from 1,500 to 2,400 um, inch grams. And on the arrow, I go up to um, 2,800. Now, if you look at the offset, on the big, big screen beyond, it's like an inch and a quarter. And as I understand it, my face will be molded into whatever this is. So it should be that, or maybe even slightly less, depending on my forehead shape bases, you know, compared to their normal. Um, and I end up with uh, 158 um, inch grams. So it's, it's almost one tenth what the rift is. So the 500 gram lighter weight rift, it's, it's about one tenth that amount of, of weight that I'm getting. Now, compared to something like this, um, it's like 5%, 1 20th of what this is. So the amount of weight you feel in your face is going to be a lot less. Um, but that's just a comfort thing. When you're moving around in VR, bouncing and so forth, what you need to deal with is momentum. So that's your mass times velocity. So based on where my spine is and rotating my head just 90 degrees in say one second, right? Um, I calculated based on the headsets and how far they are away from my head, um, the, uh, the radius, and it's just two pi r for the circumference, and then one quarter of that would be 90 degrees. Um, and then uh, added the mass in. So when I calculated this out, um, for the rift, I got um, 7,000 inch second grams, right? And that's based on a uh, nine inch radius, um, two pi r, you know, it ends up being like 56 something inches and um, one quarter of that's about 14 inches. So that times 500 grams. So I end up with 7,000. For the index, I get a momentum of 11,200 um, inch second grams. Um, and then uh, for the arrow, it's uh, about 12,000 inch second grams. Um, and going back to this, the big screen beyond is about 1,400. So compared to say 12,000, 1,400, you get a lot less momentum. So you don't have nearly as much motion or is, you don't have nearly as much um, momentum trying to move the headset relative to your face. Okay, so that's, that's just a force. So the force is much smaller. So what does that mean in terms of image quality? How can you get better image quality where people feel like the experience is better? Well, if, you're, uh, if you think in terms of astigmatism, right? So many of you out there may have prescriptions for astigmatism. I know I do. Um, that has to do with muscles in your eyes, basically shaking your eyes. So on one eye, I've got 180 degree astigmatism, which means the muscles are pulling it basically horizontally back and forth. The other one's 170, so slight angle, and it's moving around, and I have optics to adjust for that. And without the adjustment, that little bit of motion takes away from what I can resolve. It, it reduces the clarity that I can see. So if you've got a headset and you're in a motion rig and it's it's moving around a little, or you're in, you know, room scale and moving your head around and the headset is moving around, there's no way for you to resolve all the detail. Now, that's less of an issue if you're dealing with an old headset like an Oculus Rift. But by the time you get to up something up like an arrow, which 
is at about half your retina um, PPD, there, there's, a, there's a lot that you can't resolve until the headset is still. So when you first put it on, everything looks sharp, and as long as you're moving slowly and everything's gradual, it's fine. As soon as you're playing a game and you hear something behind you, or you're driving on a motion rig and you're feeling things happening, the headset is going to be in motion relative to your body. And you are going to have a lower effective resolution that you're able to make out. It'll look really sharp, and then it'll go out of, you know, it won't be nearly as sharp while you're moving around. And what I believe that we're seeing with these people and their claims for how much more realistic it is, is that it's more like when you're looking around a room and you don't have to wait for something to settle on your face. You move your head and it's sharp. You can see it. You look and it's sharp. You don't have that settling time. And if you're in a game like a first person shooter and you're moving around looking at different things, you're going to spend much more of the time with your headset in motion. And I think having the headset stay clear while you're looking around your surroundings or dealing with bumps in the road is what gives that additional clarity where people can say that um, even though this has um, less resolution than, say, an arrow, that it looks sharp and clear like one. And to say that they have a better experience has a lot to do. I mean, part of it's going to be comfort. You, you don't, if you can forget about your headset, it's going to be a better experience. But if you're able to just look around and not wait for your headset to jiggle and, and, uh, and settle down, you're going to have a better experience because it's going to feel more natural. And I think that's the whole thing. The, the having this magical experience in VR, it's like if it feels a lot more natural because it's moving with you, it's molded to your face, it weighs a lot less, it has much less of a lever arm because it's right on your face, it's not hanging out in front of it, so it's moving with you and everything is staying sharp throughout your range of motion all the time. You're bumping down the road, you're looking at stuff, everything stays sharp. You don't have that little bit of settling time at the end of every motion. And in VR, and like I said, unless you're just calmly puttering around in an airplane and not moving much, you're going to have that motion factor. And I think that is the key thing that people are trying to express but have no idea. We have not had the numbers to describe how much it impacts your VR experience when your headset is moving relative to your face. The settling time that it takes for it to stop moving and give you as sharp an image as it's capable of giving you. And that, I think, is the missing link to all of these rave reviews that say it's more than the sum of its parts. It's like, well, the, the sum of its parts is the lack of parts, the, the fact that it's a minimalistic design that weighs very little, that is really close to your face, and that has a snug fit on your face. Now, obviously, that comes at the expense of general use, but in all of these headsets, and, and I like all these headsets. I enjoyed the Rift for a while. I loved my Index for like three and a half years. I've been enjoying my, my Arrow since February of this year. But in each case, my nose is rattling around inside here. In every single case, even on the Rift, it's rattling around. So if something is fitting my face perfectly and tracking with my face perfectly so that what I'm seeing is clear all the time, exactly the same. The consistency, it's not changing. That's going to make the immersion feel more realistic. And that, I think, is why these people are saying the things they're saying. It, it doesn't make sense until you think in terms of astigmatism and how the motion of the displays relative to your eyeballs is making it so that a great deal of the time you're not resolving what your headset is showing you. It's not reaching your retina because it's bouncing, it's moving, and you can't get there. So um, I think that's my best way of explaining this. So, uh, so to recap, I think there are numbers that do explain why this should give a better VR experience. We need to think in terms of settling time when you're moving your head and the headset is, is not quite there with your face when your nose is rattling around or it's 
moving in a direction that doesn't exactly match where your face is all the time. Something that is small light and molded to your face that can track your motions perfectly is going to make what you see through it consistent. If things go in and out of focus or get blurred while the headset is catching up with your face movements or the motion of your motion rig, then you're losing out on resolving the actual resolution your headset produces. And I think that's the reason people are saying what they are about this headset. It is allowing them a consistent experience seeing what the headset is capable of producing. So even if something like this produces a little bit more resolution, the experience could still be better with this. Form your own opinions. I hope that's helpful to some of you.